When we held LBX 2025, we knew we wanted to make custom, individualized badges for our attendees. Digital fabrication tools are extremely powerful in situations like these, giving us the freedom to get creative with our design and the ability to swiftly batch out hundreds of personalized copies. From start to finish, we used four different lasers, one CNC router, and two programs, Lightburn and Millmage. We know most people don't have the entire range of hardware we have here at HQ, but we'll cover plenty of tricks that you can apply to lots of other projects using any machine. And if you're thinking about getting a new machine for your shop, this project will show you some of the capabilities you can add and the power of staying within the same software family throughout your production process. The first step was to cut the backing pieces of our badges, made of 1 16th inch two-tone white-black acrylic, and the decorative rings for their fronts, made of 1 16th red acrylic. Next, we used Millmage and our CNC router to create and cut a jig that we could mount to a rotary and place our blanks into. We set the jig up to engrave a badge, advance, and then mark the next line in a spreadsheet, using Lightburn's repeat marking and variable text features. For that part, we used a couple of our Galvo lasers to mark each badge, front and back. We used a CO2 Galvo laser to remove the white layer of the two-tone acrylic, and a UV laser to get a nice white mark on the back sides. For this first video, we'll show how we use tool layers and grid array to lay out our graphics and determine how much material we needed to order to cut the two components of our badges. To follow this process for any project, you'll just need to know the dimensions of whatever material you plan to work with, the amount of items you want to cut from it, and then do a little math. We cut the backing pieces with our biggest laser, an 80 watt glass tube CO2. The largest sheets of the two-tone acrylic that will fit in this machine are 24 by 24 inches. So the first step in Lightburn is to make a square that matches those dimensions. We'll select the rectangle tool, then hold shift while clicking and dragging. Holding shift means the shape will have uniform dimensions, resulting in a square. Now we'll adjust those dimensions up in the numeric edits toolbar. Make sure the lock icon is enabled so the aspect ratio is maintained when you adjust either dimension. I have Lightburn set to metric right now, but I know the sheet's dimensions in inches. Rather than do the math or change my settings, I can just include the notation for inches and have Lightburn do the conversion. Now we have a 24 by 24 inch representation of the sheet, or 609 by 609 in millimeters. We'll set it to a tool layer. That means it's only used as a guideline and will never be sent to the laser to be cut. Next, we'll import our badge design and remove all the elements we don't need for this step. Then we place a single badge outline in the upper left corner of the square, allowing a little distance from the edge so we have some wiggle room for inaccuracy when we run the job. With the outline selected, we'll open the grid array tool, which we'll use to lay out rows and columns of copies of the original. We can see that with a 6x6 grid, the final row crosses the edge of the square on the bottom, so if we remove that, we can get 30 cuts out of this material. But I can also tell by looking at this that we can use a couple grid array tools to make better use of the space. We'll enable shift by half for the rows, which allows the tops and bottoms of the outlines to nest better together if we also reduce Y spacing. We get another row out of this, but the shift does cause half a column or three outlines to overlap along the left side. That's okay, we can delete those three and still end up with 33 total, a net of three over the initial layout. We need 500 backing pieces in total, so that's 500 divided by 33 for 15 and change. We have to round that up to 16 sheets, plus a handful more. If, like me, you're not perfect, it's always nice to have extras. For the decorative rings, you wanted to use our 30 watt RF laser. Its slightly smaller beam size helped us cut the finer details of these pieces. The maximum sheet size we can fit into this machine is 12 by 19 inches. We'll create a rectangle, then make sure the lock icon is disabled so we can adjust each dimension individually. In this case, it's clear that our max is a 3x5 grid for 15 total per sheet, without any room to squeeze in more. So we know we need 500 divided by 15 for 33 and a third total, which we'll also round up and pad out. If you know the speed and power settings you'll be using for your cuts and apply them ahead of time, another cool thing you can do during the planning process is use the preview feature to estimate how long the job will take. Check the total estimated time in the bottom right and multiply it by the number of sheets you need to cut. Using this, we could tell that the backing pieces wouldn't take long at all, but we needed to block off a decent amount of time to cut the more detailed rings. Once the material arrived, it was time to make the cuts. 
In our next video, we'll show how we use Millmage to create and cut a jig that we went on to use with two of our Galvo lasers. You can check that out on our Millmage channel. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Lightburn Workshop videos.